This is ContraZoom, where we go back and forth about films. I'm your host, Rachel Ho. This week, we've got a bonus episode for everybody. This is a new addition to the ContraZoom's Better Know a Contributor series, where we get to know friends of the show a little bit better. In the past, we've spoken with Sammy Fleischen, Fleischenfeld, sorry, Sammy, uh, Stephanie Pryor, Scare Traducings, Callum McNabb, and most recently, Jeff Bulmer of Classic Movies Live. And today, we've got the other half of Classic Movies Live, Pierre Frigon. 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 Frigon, yeah. Oh my God, you did it. You tried Frigon. it. Frigon, yeah. We were, deba- <laughs> we were debating if we wanted to do it like with a little French style. Um, so how are you doing? I made it sound like you guys are like married. I was like the other half of, of classic movies. Right. I mean, we've been reviewing movies for so long. It's, it's hard to believe we're not married because I feel Is like... Is it the longest relationship you've ever had? Like... Yeah, literally. <laughs> longest like, like working relationship. Oh, not... I was going to... Yeah, working relationship and like collaborative thing so we're basically married that's that's how i see it yeah basically married yeah, yeah. long distance um married. how you doing today you were recently in Kelowna on a little trip i was yeah i i just got back like at midnight last night i was so tired um <laughs> but it was cool i haven't been able i saw a couple of movies while i was there actually so that was nice but um i haven't been watching movies as much lately i was on a i was on a diet and i i hate going to the movie theater and not being able to eat popcorn so part of me was just like i refuse to watch any movies um until i can eat popcorn uh but i'm allowing myself some popcorn now so i'm I'm is it popcorn like no salt no better isn't that like technically kind of good for you yeah it's it's or not bad for you i should say i was on like a very extreme diet that probably wasn't very healthy for me but I like, for some reason, I like extreme dieting. Or I like extreme everything because I like torturing myself because I find it fun. <laughs> it's um, it's its own thing. So, yeah. You kind of like a zero to a hundred. Like you're either, it's either nothing or everything. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Before I was like, I was on a, because I, I, I go to the gym sometimes. So I was like on my bulking phase and I was like mm-hmm. force feeding myself and I hated it. Mm-hmm. And then I ate too much and I was like, oh my God, I got to like do the other, <laughs> the reverse. So I did a, um, so yeah, I'm kind of like more in the middle now. I'm gonna that's good uh, yeah 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 that's good and I I I wanted to watch Avatar in theaters and I was like I can't watch Avatar without popcorn so I was like yeah so what did you watch in Kelowna did you watch Avatar and then no I didn't I had there's no uh IMAX (laughs) I don't know I don't know why I said that but there's no IMAX in uh, Kelowna so I was waiting for here I watched um I watched the Barbarian and uh Don't Worry Darling oh Um, how'd you like them you know, Don't Worry Darling was interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely. I, I'm more interested. I want to, them to do like the uh, uh, the documentary. I, I feel like the documentary oh, the behind the scenes. Scenes would be way more interesting. Like, like, it'd be like an Apocalypse Now type scenario. <laughs> um, and then uh, The Barbarian was amazing. That was probably one of my favorite. I've had so this is This is probably, this is a really good year for movies, honestly. I've had so many great movies that I've seen in theaters. Uh, recently, Barbarian's definitely like one of them, like at least like top three so far. Yeah, I agree. So, I watched Barbarian. Yeah. I really had no idea what it was about. Um, yeah, I, I like. I think a a YouTube ad, like a trailer ad, came up when I was watching YouTube one day, and I was like, "Oh, it's mm-hmm. Bill Skarsgård. That looks interesting." And then I went to go watch it, and it like blew my mind. That's it was. It's a very very good movie. Uh, I was like, I didn't even see a trailer. I was just kind of. That's probably best. I think. And, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. All right. So, yeah. Um, I just want to say about Don't Worry Darling. I when I watched it, I thought <laughs> this it's not dumb. I was like, it's not that bad because everyone was like really, really shitting on it, right? And I was like, yeah. it's not that bad. But then as the days went on and like I had people ask me, like, so what'd you think about it? Or like what happens in it? They just wanted to know and I would explain the plot to them. I'm like, as I'm say I hear myself saying the plot, and I'm like, oh, this was really dumb. <laughs> this is a really, yeah, really dumb movie. It's like the more it's like a movie that wants you to the way it ends, it like wants you to think about it, but the more you think about it, the less it makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like, unfortunate. What did I watch? It's so weird. It's so it's all it's almost like if if they were able to like give it a very like solid ending that didn't make me want to ask questions. I might have left the theater and not thought of it again. That would have been best. Would would have been better, it. actually. Yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. Would have been better. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, all right. So before we get into the questions, so it's like a set. Let me see how many questions it is. 11 questions. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, just talk a little bit about you and Jeff and how you guys kind of connected and 
made classic movies live. I might be outing myself by asking that question because it very possibly somebody has already talked about this in another episode and well, I clearly haven't weird. listened to it. <laughs> so um, my bad. I'll try to keep it fresh. We'll see. Um, what, so me and Jeff went to the same school. It's actually so weird because Jeff, or he's in computer science uh, major and so am I. And I think he was like my TA for like a year or two. And like, I just, I knew him as like, oh, that's the computer science TA. Um, because he was like really close to our prof and I didn't know him as anything else, but I saw him a lot around campus and stuff. Uh, but then uh, what we both worked for the school newspaper called the Phoenix for a little bit. Um, and I was doing like movie reviews uh, as like a, a regular contributor. And then he was kind of, he was just voluntarily doing it, but he would also do movie reviews. <laughs> so like <laughs> there was a little bit of like, I don't know if he ever thought of it, but I was like, cause I always hated I always hated uh, being the first to be like, oh, this is what I want to write this week. But Jeff would always want to go first. And then he'd, he'd steal like a movie I was thinking of watching. And then I would be like, well, shit, okay, like what do I watch? <laughs> and then for the rest of the meeting, I'd kind of be thinking of like what else I could watch slash review. Um, so yeah, he gave me a lot of, you know, anxiety at first um, in my competitive <laughs> spirit. <laughs> uh, but that, that was, it was all good because uh uh, well, I, I think he, yeah, he reached out to me that wanting to do like a, a, a show, a podcast for our school radio, where uh, I, the con the initial concept was a lot different. Where like he wanted to do it in a few months and plan it out. Where I think he wanted to like interview a teacher, uh, and then we'd watch like. A, a movie that they recommended according to their faculty i'm like I, th I think i'm completely misremembering it i thought that sounded interesting like and we do it in front of like an audience or something uh oh, wow. and we work with the profs um and i think we were gonna do that for a while but uh i was at first i was just like let's let's just start reviewing movies because like i i, I saw this movie i really want to like talk about it um so we started doing that and then i think we were gonna do the prof thing eventually but then when COVID hit we just kind of decided to keep doing what we were doing and uh, the prof thing wasn't really an option so and then Jeff graduated so like there wasn't really any an opportunity to fully do that concept I guess um, and then yeah we just kind of kept reviewing movies together um, in, in different uh, in different like shows and stuff but yeah and then not I, I stopped writing for the now. Phoenix. Not, yeah, it's less competitive. competitive. Yeah, less I hate competitive. I hate writing movie reviews. So like, it's a really? lot better for me. Yeah, I I don't know if I like writing in general. Like, I don't mind like script writing, but like, I definitely hate expressing my opinion because I I don't know. I wanted <laughs> to be like very creative with it. Like, it sounds stupid, but like, I wanted to be like, oh, I want to be like a creative movie reviewer, add yeah, something special to it. But I felt really lame just being like, is this movie good or bad, typing it out. For some reason, talking about it makes me feel a lot better about myself. Um, it's more like, I yeah. guess you get to be a bit more, um, like, narrative in a way if you get to, when you say it, like, when you speak it, sorry. Whereas when you write it, you kind of, as much as everybody, I think, wants to try to be, like, super creative with their film reviews, they all just kind of come out the same. And, and that's exactly. how people want them to be. Like, editors just want them to literally just be did you like the movie or not? What'd you think about it? They don't want any kind of fun little kind of cutesy language in there. Yeah. And it's just like, what's the, what's the point? Yeah. It's like, it's true. It's like a thousand Rotten Tomatoes reviewers. <laughs> and like, they're all Fair probably enough. better than me. So like, it's all good. Um, but yeah, I like this a lot more. Uh, that's good then. That's cool. Uh, you guys, how, so how long have you guys been doing classic movies live then? Like when did you, when was the first, cause uh, you guys have like a ton on SoundCloud. I remember Dakota. Yeah, we then. started on SoundCloud. Um, I think the first movie we did was Glass. Mm -hmm. Back, Glass is that was... early, tw I think that was late 2019, I want to say. Was Glass um, in 2019? Oh, I thought it was going to say That might 2016. have been early 2020. No, no, it was not. <laughs> I <laughs> like hope it not. Feels, <laughs> that would be feels like a million really scary, years ago yeah. to me. Oh, wow, 2019. So, like, relatively recent then, like, COVID. Yeah, a couple of years. And we would, like, yeah, stop cool. in the summer. So, um, yeah, I think this was the first summer we actually, like, were doing episodes throughout. That's cool. So, yeah, think about that. 
Um, all right. So we can dive into the questionnaire that uh, Dakota has Let's do lovingly it. prepared. Whoa. So first question, how many episodes have you been on? Uh, on I've been on two, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I was yeah. That's like a trick question. <laughs> I looked at the thing, but I was like, maybe this is a test, like, <laughs> like trying try to see if, like, I'd be like, oh, actually, I was on this one, too, or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think I was on two. Okay, so then of those two episodes, which one was your favorite guest appearance? Um, well, from the list, it was, I think it was Life and Beth. And mm-hmm. what was the other movie? It was, I, I know it was Life and Beth, because I loved that movie. I thought it was one of the weirdest it was probably one of the most memorable viewings of a movie i had and also had a lot of fun talking about it with you guys I that, that was a good really episode funny. i do remember doing that one yeah yeah because i think we were all just kind of trying to figure out what our thought like we didn't understand it and we were all just trying to figure it out and then also it was it was interesting it was like a surgery a four yeah, it, that was a, that's a really good surgery. movie yeah that's like a good movie for um discussion stuff like which is yeah for sure good pick by you guys so yeah i love that the other i remember what judas and the mank i hated both of those movies so like, i don't know if i have very fun memories of that i don't think i was on that episode. Uh, you, that was probably one of the oscar ones that you did with dakota right um, yeah what, what did i think of judas judas was fine i didn't know if it was like i feel like it could have been so much better Given the yeah. topic that, like, yeah, sorry, talking, like, and and the actors that they have, like, I think it could have been better. Mank was crap. I'm like, what was <laughs> Thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> and Mank was crap. I really couldn't stand that movie. Like, I think I fell asleep three times watching it and thinking, like, okay, you got to get through this. But I just kept falling asleep, and I'm like, this looks cool, but yeah. so you never actually finished it. I did. I, like, eventually oh, okay. I did, but like, it took me so much effort to finish that I'm like, <laughs> clearly, I do not enjoy this movie. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, I didn't like that one, and it was, it just felt so. What's the words like self indulgent kind of? Thing. Oh yeah, like, it's just very whatever. I it's very yeah. Hollywood. But it was one of those that you watch it and you go, you know that they're going to be all over this during awards, and it's going to be the big one that they kind of prop up. Yeah, I'm trying to think, did they? They didn't end up winning too much, actually. Not really. I I mean, I guess David Fincher, ironically, isn't that much of an Oscar darling, but yeah, he's not. Um, Amanda, say- Amanda, uh, what's her name? Amanda Seyfried, Siegfried. Seyfried, I think. She got nominated. And I remember really liking her in it. She was quite good in that movie. Yeah. I kind of remember her character. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't I think, didn't, didn't she flirt with Gary Oldman a bit or something? Yeah. And her dad was like a really <laughs> rich guy. And, uh, yeah, like yeah. That. yeah. That's all I really remember. <sighs> I barely remember that movie too. So, so yeah. by default, because Judas and Mank are not, you're not up on those. So I don't default, even remember then. recording that episode. <laughs> I don't just, remember. Every, I was like, I talked about, about this. <laughs> like, you just blocked uh, it from your memory at this point. Basically, yeah. Like, again, like, okay, Judas wasn't a terrible movie, but it was just, like, these are think, best picture winners. Like, yeah, on, like, I agree. Um, you know, um, that, it's not just, not just by default. That was actually a really fun episode. Uh, the life Yeah, I was going to say, Life Trash with Beth was a really, really fun one. Like, that was uh, that was part of your guys' kicking 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 it with Kendrick or kicking it, it with Kendrick? Kicking yeah. it with Kendrick. <clears throat> which, I think you guys have done that now, right? Oh, no, but Alice Darling is out, which... Yeah. I, <laughs> I thought that, that's That'll over. pull you back in. Yeah. Which I'm sure Jeff really loved that. I think he did say to me he really loved that one. Yeah, he said he saw Anna Kendrick, like, up close to, like, an interview or something. He did tell there. me that. So I bumped into Jeff at TIFF, which we were just talking about. Um, and, yeah, he told me that he, he, I guess, where he was sitting, like, she came up, I don't know, for the, the Q&A portion, which they, they tend to do. But um, I actually completely forgot she was even at TIFF until... I- there was some story about her getting stuck in the in an elevator. I was like, oh, oh she's here. That's the only exciting thing about Anna Kendrick. <laughs> that, that was <laughs> that. So that's what I took it. took away from that's Tiff and it. Anna Kendrick was she got stuck in an elevator and she was like on Instagram or some crap like that, showing everybody. If I if I hadn't done the show, I I probably wouldn't have given Anna Kendrick much thought either. Like, yeah, oh, Anna Kendrick. You know, anyways, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it's exactly <laughs> what I kind of thought. I'm like, oh, Anna Kendrick got stuck in an elevator. Cool. Kind of cool. Like, that's great. <laughs> that's excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah, but whatever. Uh, okay, so best or not best favorite guest appearance would be Life After Beth, which is a very, very good movie and a fun one to talk about. So I would 
for sure. Not that this question is for me, but I would agree with you on that one. I think between those two <laughs> episodes, Rachel, I would probably, I would probably do that one. Yeah, just backing yeah. you. Who's who's interviews? <laughs> no. I know. I'm just, I'm just gonna answer the questions no, no. with it's you. It's cool. Basically. I like it. It makes me feel less <laughs> alone. I don't know. <laughs> It would be weird if you were like, yeah, life of Beth, after Beth, that's cool, okay. That's cool. Anyways. Beyond question two, <laughs> or I guess question three now. All yeah. right, so actually question three, next one. Uh, what made you fall in love with movies? I would say that I, because um, I, I think growing up, I was like, I was, I was, I was a, is the correct term late bloomer now? Is that how it works? Like, <laughs> I think that is, yeah. That I is a term it that people sounds use. so weird to say still. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, I was very shy growing up and I was very scared to do like lots of, I, w- I always dreamed about doing like lots of fun things, but I never like really did them because I was really shy and scared of doing stuff. So uh, I feel like movies was just like um, my way of uh, kind of being an adventurer, I guess. And like, I always like dreamed of uh, I'd be like, Oh, I wish I could, I I wanted to live like they did in the movies, I guess. So that was kind of like, like a fantasy thing for me and it was a nice escape. Um, So yeah, stuff like that. I, and then I think growing up, I just really started appreciating like the art behind it a lot more. um, And I found them like to be a lot more inspiring. And uh, you know, as I got more into like less blockbuster movies and nerdy movies and more like deep movies, uh, you know, like looking at a lot of the life lessons they can teach you. And I, I see them as a great way of like now, like learning other people's perspective on things um, and just, just seeing like how much the imagination can do, I guess. Um, and I guess inspire, they also inspire me to like be a better person and, uh, just be more creative, I guess, and try to be more understanding of people. So I like that. That's a really nice yeah, answer. It really helps me. Um, um, also, I love there... superhero movies, so <laughs> 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 that, that's another path of it. But yeah, uh, I was gonna say, was there a particular movie you remember watching when you were a kid that just kind of like gripped you? Well, the first I'll always remember watching, like Spider Man for the first time in theaters when I was like five. Yeah, I think with my dad. Which Spider Man to like age you? All right, yeah, <laughs> Spider Man one. Because uh, I, I I watched the sorry Toby Toby Maguire Spider Man. Okay, Spider-Man, it would be Toby. I'm like, who who would be the Spider Man? Okay. <laughs> There's too many. Now. Uh, now it was the Japanese Spider Man movie. <laughs> 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 that would I think that would have killed my love for me. <laughs> that would like. Uh, I still actually need to watch that. I want to watch that. The uh, yeah, it was it was the Toby Spider Man. Um, and I, I just remember that movie. It was such, it's such an interesting movie in terms of like a blockbuster because it, especially when you're a kid, like it has some very brutal scenes, some very mm-hmm. funny scenes, some very hopeful scenes, romantic scenes. Um, it's just an all around great package. And, you know, it had such a big cultural impact uh, at the time. And I definitely felt it because, uh, I don't know, I guess Spider-Man. I, I used to watch Spider-Man 2, like, the 1967 series with my dad oh, wow. every night. So, like, I was kind of, from a, like, from a very young child, like, brought into the Spider-Man world. Uh, so, yeah, I was, like, a big fan of superhero movies. And then I think, like, my true, like, love for movies, though, happened when I watched The Dark Knight. Uh, because it was just, like, I was just, like, wow, like, you can have, like, a comic book movie and a superhero movie, but it actually be like really, you know, really gritty and like, oh, sorry, I think I feel like gritty is not the right word, but like just very, it was very thoughtful too. And like, mm-hmm. it had a lot of like deep, deeper themes. Um, and you know, I know, I know it's not like the most, uh, like the craziest movie in terms of like depth, but I think it, it was, it's, I think Christopher Nolan's like a great director to like kind of open your eyes to like looking into being more curious into like more artsy and like more uh, subtle movies, if that makes sense. So the dark Knight was like a big changing point. And that that's when I like really got into it. And I'd like, I watched scenes, I'd rewatch scenes for that movie so many times. Um, and that's when I really started like following directors and stuff too. And like appreciating movie as like an art, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I think um, I like that you chose Toby's Spider-Man because I feel like, since there's been so many Spider-Mans after Spider-Men. 
And, yes, Spider-Man. and because Tom Holland is so popular right now, I'm like, people sometimes forget that Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man was actually, especially the first one, but the second one too was really, really great. The third oh, yeah, one's the definitely. only one that I'm like, it that wasn't that great, but those first two <laughs> movies fair. were so, 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 so good. And I think those two combined with Dark Knight and Batman Begins too, I would say, they kind of mm. showed like how, what, what you could do with superhero movies. Like they didn't just need to be, you know, the Adam West, the cheesy kind of whatever thing, but like those, those movies kind of did that. And I think that it's cool, like that you point to those movies, because those are the ones that I would think that as like, at, for a younger person watching them, you know, it ties you into grips you on the side of it's a superhero and it's fun and it's Spidey and it's Batman and that's cool. Yeah. Um, but it also like can, like you just said, like it, it, it can just kind of elevate your understanding and appreciation for movies, generally speaking. Yeah, for sure. And they've aged like amazingly. Like I can still watch. I mean, Spider-Man 1's iffy, but I appreciate it for what it is still. Um, but yeah. When was the last time you saw Spider-Man? I haven't seen it in ages. Um, I think I saw it like last, because I was watching them all running into No Way Home, I think. So Uh, okay. I watched them like about a year ago. Oh, when did that come out? Not even. Yeah, like nine months ago. So yeah, I've seen Spider-Man 2 so many times, though. I can't watch that movie again. Like, it's... I know every beat, it's too much, but yeah. <laughs> um, alrighty. So, oh, like, this kind of ties in very nicely, but, like, what is your favorite movie of all time? Uh, yeah, I, I think it was... I thought I had it written down. That's so weird. It, it's... it's uh, Oh, no, it's... Uh, it's sorry, it's across, uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Uh, yeah, because... Uh, I don't know. Spider-Man yeah, the animated into the one. Spider-verse? Into the Spider-Verse. The new one's across the Spider-Verse, sorry. Yeah, the new one's across. Favorite um, movie, you don't even know the title of it. Peter. Right, yeah, I'm sorry. Come I'm on. just, I'm looking towards the future. I just, <laughs> I don't live in the past like that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That that movie was... That was incredible. I, I, guess, I guess it's it's tough because it just, I mean, it's an amazing movie. And I think it just tied into my nostalgia really well. And uh, it really opened my eyes a lot into like, so many different like things in terms of like I thought the like it it really changed my perspective on animation like mm-hmm. um you know I, I felt like before Pixar I was kind of the leader in the industry for such a long time but after watching that movie I was I can't look at Pixar the same um, especially now because you can just tell they've they've kind of settled into their own space. Um, and meanwhile, that movie was extremely intensive and like, it really pushed the bound, it pushed the boundaries in, in so many ways, in my opinion, in terms of animation, storytelling, uh, what else? Like, I guess like, I don't know how many multiverse movies there was up until that point. Um, and it's I mean, just not, it's a, not in terms of the comic book movies, none like that. That was the first one that did it. Yeah, I feel in like movie it really form. Like I know in TVs, like they kind of had done it in the past, but in movie form, I think that was the first one that they did. They said like, "Oh, we've got these timelines," and then MCU yeah. took it and just right. Yeah, they, <laughs> just yeah. Oh, I, I feel like it, with it, but. it. It like it's crazy too. Like they they fit all that multi interdimensional stuff, and they also create like a an origin story for Miles Morales who mm-hmm. I read his comics. He's a great character. And, uh, and they also just really redefined like, like obviously like Spider-Man before was always like, like anyone can be Spider-Man, but mm-hmm. I feel like that movie really truly like brought it to th- that to its core and really made me see that in a new light. Um, and that's what I kind of meant by like, like I find movies really inspiring that, that movie, like when I watch it, it makes me want to be a better person. Um, and stuff because that's really what it's about that like it doesn't really matter who you are that anyone can be a better person if you like just put in the work and you help other people and stuff so yeah it's a great movie and I've seen that also I can't really watch that movie that much anymore either because I've seen it so many times but um yeah it was it was a great it was a great movie and it came at I'd say at like a very pivotal time in my life too when like I needed a movie like that that makes sense that's nice. Yeah. yeah, that was like me with um Soul, which is a Pixar movie, funny enough. Yes, that's um, a movie too. But it is just one of those like it's it's always nice when a good movie not even necessarily a good movie, because I think bad movies can do this too, but like just a movie comes to you at the very, very right time and it just kinda hits you in the right way. I mean, into the Spider Verse is 
truly one of the greatest, especially in the, say, the last, what, 20 some odd years. Like, it's definitely one of the best movies that's that's been put out and, and incredibly unique considering how formulaic that superhero movies have gotten. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just so exhausting to me. But like that movie always stood out is like, you can still do some really, really interesting stuff with it. That's like super, mm. super cool and thoughtful and not just relying on, you know, big explosions and things like that. Like one of my favorite yeah. things in that movie I remember is when Carlton Fisk, is that his name? Yeah. Carlton Fisk. Like when he like gets really, really big and they just show him like giant on the screen. Yeah. That was one of my favorite things in that. Cause I loved the cartoon growing up. Yeah. Um, so it was really cool seeing him like that. Yeah, uh, that's really nice though. <laughs> yeah. That, um, yeah. Okay, so next question: What is a movie that you're embarrassed to say you've never seen? I would say I would say Jaws. I think there's. I've never seen Jaws. Yeah, there's a, like a lot of. I think. I mean, sorry, I I was listening to Jeff's episode. He said Jaws too. Like, not serious? Jaws 2, but he oh, said Jaws as well. I would, not, I would blame him for not Jaws. saying Jaws 2. Jaws as well. Yeah. Um, you guys should oh, do an episode where you watch Jaws because that's, that's actually incredible so weird. that you guys have missed that. That's so funny. Yeah, I didn't know he didn't watch that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I There's a lot of movies, like classic movies. Ironically, we run classic movies live, but there's so many classic movies I haven't actually <laughs> seen um, just because, like, I, I feel like there's, like, part of me that really hypes up these movies and i'm like okay i gotta be like the right mindset to watch like this really really old movie i don't want to mess it up and i feel like jaws is one of them um it's just like just the biggest one that i could think of that i hadn't seen Um, it's a very good one but yeah i really want to watch it i was gonna watch it it was in they were playing it in theaters last week and i was gonna see it i was so close but i didn't have time they did um I think they they put it out. Spielberg did it in IMAX. Like he printed it out to IMAX. Actually, yeah. That, I hope I can find it because that would be really cool. He, he was competing with Avatar or something. Is that? His, I know. I don't Avatar understand what was really. going on in that like very brief period. Like I think Jaws got reissued. Avatar, but Avatar, he's doing it for the sequel. Avatar yeah. Chapter Two through Seven or whatever <laughs> the hell he's doing. Um. But I think I, I want to say Spielberg reissued E.T. as well. I could be wrong about oh, that. Oh, I haven't seen E.T. either. I need to see that. I haven't seen E.T. It reminded either. me, yeah. Why do you hate Steven Spielberg? What's I don't know. I That's <laughs> that's actually a really good question. I don't love, like, I, I don't, like, I, I respect him, but I'm also not a huge, I don't know any movies. I've never really, like, loved any of his movies, so that makes sense. Even though I, like, he's done a, ma- a lot of amazing movies. I can't think of one that maybe like jurassic park but no, i mean that's a i mean great. that's i feel like that's cheating like <laughs> you can't but that is like one of i mean it is one of his best movies but yeah i yeah. would say i feel like that is highlighting like an age difference between the two of us where i grew up in like basically it was all dress like jurassic park it was all um spielberg like that was kind of he was the director growing up in that time yeah. or when when i was growing up he was he was that guy and so you couldn't really get away from his movies like you just watched them because that's what was on and he happened to do like a decent amount of family-ish kind of movies not necessarily family movies but like age appropriate ones that anybody could watch mm-hmm. which is probably what made spielberg spielberg um Jaws is a great one. I think you and Jeff should do an episode on Jaws now, since the, neither of you have seen I it. I only do a classic movie. That'd, that'd like an cool. actual classic movie. <laughs> yeah. That'd be interesting. <laughs> That's so funny that you guys both gave Jaws. I think Jeff might have said he hasn't seen Jurassic Park either. Oh, that's embarrassing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of ashamed about that. Um, the the yeah. podcast has disbanded. You know why. Yeah. <laughs> Together, you guys are done. Because I think he... I, no, there's no way. Because... We, I know we wa- we reviewed Jurassic World three, so, so he, if we were reviewing Jurassic World without reviewing Jurassic Park, I'd be like, "Yeah, what am I doing?" He here? said, <laughs> "If I remember correctly, I think he said that he's seen all the new Jurassic movies, like the the I guess they're called Jurassic World, right? Like the Chris Pratt ones are called Jurassic yeah. World, but he's never seen any of the original it's ones. Even worse. And to be fair with the original <laughs> ones, like I think Jurassic Park is probably the not the only good one. Lost World's not bad. But like, yeah, like th- those ones. But he's seen the new ones, which are terrible. 
And he probably yeah. has like a really bad image of Jurassic Park now because he's like, oh, these movies suck. So obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he doesn't want to watch it anymore. Jeez. No, that's too bad. That's funny though. That's really, really funny. You guys should do, um, when you're done with your Kendrick series, which I guess you guys are, move to Steven Spielberg because. That would be cool. Yeah. I, I should recommend that. You all have clearly an issue with Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yeah, and you apparently. need to reconcile that issue right now. Yeah. We're just caught. We can't. We can't follow the the what the most popular director of all time. That's too. That's too <laughs> Is that too on the nose? It's yeah, the it's nose. like come on. He's become Honestly. though. I, I the funniest thing to me is kind of seeing a younger, even younger than you, generation on Twitter like going off on, um, like what they what they deem as being really like kind of elitist film like very snooty highfalutin mm. film kind of opinions and they yeah. talk about steven spielberg like that and i'm like <laughs> spielberg is one of the most just general audience directors that <laughs> ever was and that's why he is so popular and so famous is because he literally made movies that everybody could enjoy and to call yeah. him like some artsy fartsy like director <laughs> i'm like that's not spielberg yeah i would <laughs> say that's funny that's- yeah. Oh, yeah. Ready Player uh, One was was very, was yeah. very uh, artsy. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Uh, it's just yeah. a. I guess it's because cause he directed movie. what that that movie, uh, the recent one. That wasn't that artsy. But... The musical. Like his... Oh, West Side I Story. Completely... Yeah, I hated that movie, but I could see why <sighs> people know. will call that artsy. I guess. But it's just a musical. It's like literally one of the most popular musicals of all time. Like even if you've never seen I, West Side Story, you know what? Like you've heard of the title West Side Story. Like that can't. I don't know. I never heard of it. You've I don't never know heard of West Side Story. I never yeah, seen I don't know it if people before. Than me, Maybe it's just me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not up to date. I, I'd never. Sure. So I'd never seen West Side Story before his mm. movie came out, and then I watched the old one, and then I watched his. Which one's better? I'll be completely honest. The story of West Side Story just doesn't really click with me. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it's fine. Like, it's fine. Yeah. Like you can watch Spielberg's and be like, he's a very, very good director. Like he's very good at what he does. Um, yeah. I don't know that the story just doesn't really do it for me. Actually, I just, yeah. I just I, don't I get agree. like, the, you, they're supposed to be like gangs, but they're like snapping their fingers <laughs> and dancing. like dancing in the street. And I'm just like, that's, it's like, I didn't, wait, I didn't have grow you, up with that idea of gangs. Like gangs seen, to me um, are something very different. Have you seen Arrested Development at all? Mm-hmm, yeah. It's like when Tobias like gathers those those street people. He thinks they're like gangsters, but oh, they're actually yeah. like strippers or something. <laughs> <laughs> and he turns, and he reforms them into like <laughs> dancers or whatever. It's like exactly I was that. Listening an episode of smartless today uh, mm. the, i don't really listen to that podcast but uh, ethan hawk has an episode and that has um jason bateman and will arnett and sean hayes from will and grace but they were talking a little bit about arrested development and it made me literally like two hours before i just talked to you it made me think i kind of want to watch arrested development again that was a good that was it's a, a good, good show. show yeah well yeah, there, you brought it up no, i have to yeah um, okay, so moving on from Spielberg, so I guess he's not your answer for this question then. But who's your favorite director? Uh it's it's Christopher Nolan. I hate saying it, but like it's such a He's um, good. Why he's, why do you hate saying really, it? I just feel like it's every it's it's so many like it's it, he's like he's like the the artsy director everyone kind of knows. So they're like <laughs> instantly say him because they've seen one of his movies. But they're all like the thing that's the thing. They're like he makes he's kind of like yeah, I don't want to say Spielberg because he's obviously. I don't think he has like the the consistency of Spielberg, but he's um he definitely he hasn't been around as long as Spielberg though. To be fair, like Spielberg's uh, started in the seventies, right? So yeah, like he's so got like a lot to do with like and he's. Years. I wouldn't say he's had bad movies, but he's well. He actually he has had bad movies, but it's just like <laughs> you know Nolan just started in what. 2000 first movie? or 90, 98 I, think. I was gonna say i think like 98 or something like that with like that's a, when that was like a movie he made like with his own what money. was that one called for, for the giving? following the following thank you yeah yeah but i mean even from insomnia that's still we're talking like 20 some odd years which is a long time yeah. but in comparison yeah. to say a spielberg or a scorsese he's still fairly yeah, he's he's got a lot of time i think he's like like 50 mid 50s so um but yeah no he he 
he he's great because he he can he can do the Spielberg thing where I think he can make these very interesting, deep, um, ambitious movies. But he's also like an amazing marketer mm-hmm. in terms of he can sell everything he he makes, which is why he can make more ambitious stuff, right? Um, so like he, I I. I I kind of hesitate to call him like as influential on the industry as um as like some of the greats, you know, but I I think he has time to prove that. But then also like yeah, he's had some like if you ask one person like their top anyone like their top twenty favorite movies, and they could be like movie buffs or they could be like ge- very general, like casual movie watchers. I feel like they would all at least mention one uh Nolan movie, whether it be like The Dark Knight, Inception, Interstellar. I feel like those are usually like Mm-hmm. The three that like people see the best. Um, but yeah, the Prestige. I love the Memento. I love, I love. the Prestige. Really right, the they're prestige. they're all really good. And I like Tenet was definitely a misstep, but I still I still appreciate like the ambition behind it and stuff. Um. So yeah, I think uh, I think he has a lot more to prove. Um, but he he has he, he's just a great all around filmmaker, and he I think he's he's putting himself up to be a very or he's already a, like the biggest heavy hitter director in the industry but he has a lot of room to move up to because um now he like the deals he gets to he can make literally anything he wants yeah. and got, like blank checks him. with universal now like they're just like throwing money right in to exactly he wants. yeah um and this is in an industry where everyone's making franchise movies um yeah and he's just doing <laughs> his true. own thing so uh yeah I, think- I, I really love him and respect the way he works I think when you talk about like what Nolan's influence on the industry, I feel like we just haven't seen it yet. Like I feel like right now the people who are in film school or in high school right now who are going to be the next big directors to come up, like when they come up in say 20 years or something like that and they get asked like, who was your favorite director growing up? Who influenced you? Like Christopher Nolan will definitely be a director. Oh name yeah, that we hear sure. a lot I hope so. From that. Yeah. I, th- I think he will be because yeah, I think that we maybe we just don't see his influence yet because we're just in the middle of it, you know? Like, yeah. I'm not comparing Nolan to Hitchcock or anything like that, but it's like, <laughs> if you if you were around when Hitchcock's movies were coming out, like, it's kind of hard to see that he was going to be this really great, you know, super, super influential director. But it's not until so many years have passed that we look back and we go, oh, shit, yeah, like, he kind of changed things. And I, yeah. I think Nolan did, because I think, like, Nolan, Nolan makes movies that, are insanely huge in scope. Like they do feel like big, big studio pictures and you know, they like, I mean, he did, he did make superhero movies, but it's like, he can make that really big thing, but the ideas in them are movies that you think belong more in like indie films. Right. Exactly. Um, And so it's like, he's got like a really cool balance of like indie ideas, but with a studio budget. So Mm -hmm. like in Tenet, he's able to actually blow up, an actual plane which is crazy (laughs) who does that like i find that to be just one of the craziest things in the world that he's like no i'm gonna actually blow up a plane it's like dude you know you can make like a figurine like a toy and then blow that up and that will look absolutely fine that's the only thing i'm kind of like a little i mean i i guess it works because but like yeah it's like it looks why, great. Like it looks it's like great. a meme almost where he's like, "Yeah, I, I gotta like, I gotta do the real thing." Like I'm scared. Like with his, he's got the nuclear bomb movie next. <laughs> <laughs> was he? What, what, what is real to you, Nolan? <laughs> Every, everyone's like so scared about like nuclear war, like kicking off over in China and Russia and stuff in <laughs> North Korea. It's actually just Christopher just Nolan <laughs> filming his movie. Like that's all it's been. That would be very amusing <laughs> if that was the case. Yeah. yeah um okay so moving on favorite best picture winner so oscar best picture winner oh i was uh i kind of have two well i'll choose um i'll just choose one actually i'd say probably lord of the rings a return of the king um okay just because i feel like uh it was i mean i don't usually like best picture winners so i thought that was like a very monumental win because it was like a blockbuster that won. It was mm-hmm. an extremely, it was like the end of an extremely huge run for Peter Jackson in terms of like, like that was, I think my opinion is probably like one of, if not the most ambitious like projects ever undertaken in the industry. Um, and I guess I'm just like, I don't love the movie that much. I just, I guess, no, I do love the movie a lot, but I'd say I just more really, I thought, I think that was like a really cool moment for the Oscars where, 
they were willing to recognize like that effort. Cause I feel like a lot of the movies um, they do recognize are don't really don't actually have that much of a, a foothold on like the industry or like have that much of an impact. Um, but I feel like that one did. The other one I would say is Parasite just because I think mm-hmm. that is also a movie that that's going to have that win is going to have a huge impact on the industry going forward. And I also love that movie too. It's really, really good. And uh, yeah, the most Oscar winners though, I don't usually like they're very, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very serious, like everyone knows it or every, like a lot of people that follow the Oscars now kind of know what I'm talking about. So I don't need to talk about it that much, but um, yeah. Yeah. It's this idea that, I mean, it's the biggest criticism towards the Oscars has always been that they're really out of touch. Like they're really, uh, I don't know. Like you said, like they don't cater to, or they don't not cater. That's not the right word. They don't appreciate, acknowledge, recognize um, films that have had an actual impact on the film industry, but also just like pop culture in general. Like Lord of the Rings had a chokehold over like everybody for so long. And Harry, I would put Harry Potter in that too. Mm-hmm. Like I remember when those both those franchises were coming out. To be fair, neither of them were things that I really latched onto either but um like they were massive they were all over the place and i agree with you that i think what peter jackson did it's probably one of the most ambitious undertakings that any director has said that they're going to do and and he did it like it's it's one thing to have the ambition but it's another to actually pull it off um so i like he's insane for that my funniest thing to me is like when you say Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, and you say Parasite to me. It's like, yeah, those were two movies that I think we can look at at the Oscars and be like, it looks like it should be a turning point for them that, oh, maybe they're going to, you know, <laughs> they're going to do something great now. But then, yeah. like, in between Lord of the Rings and Parasite, like, they like awarded so this, like, Green Book. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like, so yeah. they always, they kind of do that every now and then where they're just like, you know, I guess maybe something is so big that they can't ignore it. And I think Lord of the Rings, though, is like a perfect... Um, I think it's like a perfect movie for the Oscars in a sense to achieve that, like the, to achieve that idea of, of reaching out to the general public because yeah. it was so big, but it was, it was just very good as well. Like from a filmmaking perspective, it was very, very good. Yeah. It's uh, and, like, you can't always say that for some of those movies, like no offense to black Panther, but like, no, oh, yeah, <laughs> I agree. Like, black, no Panther, offense. black Panther, like Harry Potter, like should have, but yeah. yeah, Lord of the Rings is like, I would say like, some of the best movies of all time. So I just love that they did that. Um, but yeah, you're right. I don't know if we're going to get much more like that in the future, but we'll see. Maybe like every, every like five, 10 years, they decide to like give, give everyone a bone and be like, here you go. Yeah. This is, this is like, this is the, <laughs> you've got Lord of the Rings. Like now we're allowed to, to, to nominate green book or whatever. Uh, yeah. God. Whatever. Um, okay. So the opposite of that, uh, what is your least favorite best picture winner? Uh, probably. Oh God, there's a few. <laughs> I mean, I, it was tough. Uh, the the ones in the last few years, uh, Nomadland and Coda. I did not like both of them. I thought they Me were either. especially oh. Nomadland. I thought it was excessively like just bad. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I didn't like <laughs> Nomadland. I, mean, I, I was scared. I, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, you didn't like Coda either. Okay, Nomadland, I, I genuinely don't. I, I just don't see. I, it's pretty. Like, it's a very pretty movie. I'll give it that much. Like, it's a, it's a very, very nice looking film. Coda, to me, though, is like, I enjoyed it. I thought it was sweet. It was also kind of reminds me of, like, I hate, like, it sounds really rude, but it's kind of like, you know, like, after school special or, um, <laughs> yeah. Like Hallmark movie of the weekend, like that kind of yeah. a thing, like that that that's the kind of type of movie, or like a very good Disney family movie, and I think that like there's a place for those, and maybe that's just like kind of questions what kind of priority or precedent do we place on the Oscars that we think like oh well like a Disney family movie couldn't possibly be best picture, <laughs> but it's just like I mean I, I know Code is not Disney, it was uh, what was it Apple. Apple. Um, but yeah, it just, I, it was very, it was sweet, but it was just one of those that I was like, yeah, sorry. Nomadland, I, I wasn't a fan of that. Yeah, Nomadland was great. Like, it was really disappointing too, because Chloe Zhao, like, was the movie before that, The Rider, I saw. That movie was great. It was like mm-hmm. the same, like, she has her style, right? And that movie was just so much more focused and 
it's like she perfected her style there. And then with Nomadland, it, for some reason, she like went ahead and diluted her style by adding, you know, like a famous actor to it. Yeah. Um, giving it a bigger budget, which you think would make it better, but I don't know. It just, it just wandered and it felt like the most pretentious thing I've ever seen. I'd agree um, with that. And for some Dakota reason, Dakota loved it. I'll say that. Oh, much. God. Dakota <laughs> yeah, loved Nomadland. <laughs> um, well, thank God he's not here. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it was like, I don't know. I, I just, it was more frustrating. Like, I, I guess I, maybe some people liked it a lot because they hadn't seen her style before. And that was like mm-hmm. her first, like, really big movie because she had a lot going for her that year. Um, but the rider was just so much better. And I feel like that, like, Nomadland just offered nothing new. Um, yeah, and it was probably like the only time I didn't really like Frances T- McDormand in a movie, which was also you depressing. Didn't like her taking a shit in a bucket. In no, the, I, in I, in I, I much would would have rather watched a non actor take a shit in a, t- <laughs> in a bucket. <laughs> would have felt more real. I didn't feel like well. she actually took a shit. Um, but <laughs> she just sat yeah. there, made the noises. <laughs> yeah, she's an actor. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, what did you think of the Eternals? That's that's another like she Chloe Zhao has so many things I admire about her like she she has a great style like cinematography wise she's very patient with her movies so like her pacing can feel drawn out um but in some case like in the rider it worked in the Eternals it was just like she she was I think she was kind of high off the success of Nomadland even though yeah. kind of, I think Nomadland was filmed about around the same time or after um then eternals yeah because i remember i think it came out before i don't know i remember hearing it came out before but i think because it got released online right and eternals was delayed oh i see what you. so i think she was i remember reading an interview where she was like on her press tour for nomadland but she was talking about being in the editing room still for eternals oh wow um, which hey maybe that's why Eternals was edited so poorly, <laughs> it paced so poorly. But yeah, I, I I didn't. I there was so much like it was. It's a beautiful movie. I thought it had a lot of potential with the cast and the characters, but it it had all the same issues as Nomadland. But in a big yeah. blockbuster, it was too long. The characters had no like. I don't know if she can direct non actors honestly because all the actors just seemed really bored. Um. <laughs> Like I, I, I think she was asking for like I want you to act like natural or like yeah. I don't want to see regular interactions and like these these guys are supposed to be family and like they just seem like very bored strangers. They were like, oh, like hi. <laughs> they probably seen you. They were in, like, really bored years. Hollywood actors. Like yeah, really bored Hollywood exactly. actors. Exactly. So and they, they were a great cast too. I don't know how she like yeah they were a like, great cast. Drew out, sucked the charisma out of them. Um, I wonder if, like, there are some directors that I feel like who are better with small budgets. Like, I I would say, I think Robert Eggers might fall under that camp of being, he thrives more when he's given more restrictions and just, which forces you to be be a bit more creative. Um, And maybe this is Chloe Zhao's kind of restriction that she needs. It's like she needs it to be a bit more kind of guerrilla style filmmaking yeah. less less budgety like just maybe the studio stuff doesn't really work for her like that, yeah. that could be it too yeah. i agree after seeing the north man i, I think you make some solid points yeah like so. he's it's i think northman was fine but it's nothing compared to what he did before and yeah. he, i mean he's he he said in interviews too that he was just kind of like you know there was a lot of studio interference it's like well yeah if they're gonna give you say like a couple hundred million dollars, <laughs> yeah. they will have notes. Like you're yeah. not Christopher Nolan. Like Christopher Nolan can go out and do whatever he wants. Even Denis Villeneuve, I think he can probably go out and do whatever he wants. Yeah. But, you know, but, you're yeah. Robert Eggers, like you don't really have that cachet yet. So they are going to give you notes and they're going to want to see a movie that they paid for, not what yeah. you're thinking. That's what I was going to like, that's why I love Nolan too. Like, I, I feel like a lot of directors, especially with like the, the, the Marvel system, of, or actually a lot of studios do it now where they'll take, these up and coming directors and give them a ton mm-hmm. of money. It's like it, you can't just expect to make a good movie. You have to like, yeah, you have to keep it cheap. You have to make sure it makes money and then you'll actually be able to do the stuff you want to make. Um, yeah. Because like, think- like, like with the North man, it's like you really expected like 
yeah. this R-rated Viking epic <laughs> where this man just like murders a small town <laughs> over the course of yeah. a movie to like make more than $70 million. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a shame. Whatever. I like the Daniels, I think are the next kind of acting or uh, directors to like come up where I'm curious what they're going to do. Cause they signed a deal with universal as well. And they're going to go. Oh yeah. They have a, like an all out. They have like, I heard they got like the Jordan Peele deal, right? Where yeah. Have, where like That's so, a really good deal. Yeah. It's a very, very good deal. But I, I do kind of, I'm curious what they're going to do. Cause they've always done very well in the indie space of, you know, tight budgets and that kind of thing. So I, I don't know, maybe I think that, you know, you make the movie that is according to your budget versus like you got $200 million. So I'm, you know, my idea maybe only needed 50 million, but like now that I got 200, I'm just going to make it 200, 200 millions <laughs> yeah. worth. Yeah. Whereas like that, that doesn't quite work either, but yeah. no. Oh, well. Um, okay. What is the last movie that you walked out of or you turned off? Uh, Predator 2. I was watching that. Movie. Yeah. I was watching that cause I just saw Prey. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this was really good. I should watch the Predator movie. Because I think I, <laughs> I watched them like a few years, like like four years ago or something. I, I watched some of them with like my mom. Uh, I fell asleep in Predator 1 because I was like, I had worked <laughs> early that day. But I rewatched. So I was like, oh, is it like, I rewatched Predator 1. That was amazing. I love yeah, that Predator's movie. Good. It's so it's good. good I was like, and I was reading the rules about Predator 2. And I was like, all right. Okay, this is interesting, but it looks interesting because I was like, like, oh, he's like killing people in a city. That's new. That's like kind of cool. <laughs> and I just could not believe how it's bad. Yeah, it, it's like the aesthetic. I saw what they were going for. Like, I kind of respect it because like they were doing the same thing as Predator One, where they were like, it took the really corny aesthetic of like street crime, like gang mm-hmm. war stuff, and then added the predator into it. But it's just so <laughs> long. The acting is terrible and like yeah. the aesthetic you appreciate for maybe like 15 minutes. But after like an hour, I was like, I just don't, I can't deal with this anymore. Um, yeah. And uh, I was planning on finishing it, but I still haven't. That was like a month ago, I think. So it's like your mank. Like this is, this is your mank. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is me like having problems finishing a movie. But I, I like any time that you have problems finishing a movie to me, it's just like, it's probably just not for you. Just move on. Although I would say Predator 2, I don't think is for really anybody because I don't know anyone that likes it. And I think if anybody says they like it, they're just trying, like, trying to be like contrarian to be like, yeah, I like that movie. Yeah, it's unique or something. It's Yeah, but it's just a bad movie. A bad yeah. movie is a bad movie. We'll see. I'll I'll try. Maybe I'll do it in like five minute, like bite, <laughs> five bite minute size segments. Yeah. <laughs> some sprints i feel like that would make the movie even worse that would like every (laughs) day i would be like god i gotta watch another five minutes of predator (laughs) 2 like jesus (laughs) suck (laughs) um i like this question what is an underrated movie that you think more people need to see um i guess this is like because i'm like i'm like relatively young but uh like i know so many people that have never seen airplane and really? it drives me crazy because I think, I mean, it's like, I know a lot of people that like, like that do watch like a lot of movies. No, it's like, it's like one of like the funniest movies ever. I think it's the funniest movie ever made. Um, and like, no, so many people haven't heard of it or seen it. And it like makes me so sad because like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's aged beautifully. Like, Maybe a couple jokes here and there are like a little <laughs> out of But you know, that's part of the fun. I feel like uh I feel like it just yeah, it's it's so good. I, I really wish it had like more just cultural relevance. I and I know it still does, but like if I'm talk I can't I wish I could I just wish I could reference it to my friends and stuff and like <laughs> they would understand it, but people never do. That's okay. It is one of those weird movies that is I mean, for all intents and purposes, it is it is rated quite highly. Like it is one of those that people do love and people do consider it a classic, but it's one of those that somehow gets forgotten. Like when you talk about some of the great comedies of all time, like a lot of people go to like Monty Python and um, Princess Bride and things like that. But like somehow airplane, I do notice that it sometimes gets missed out of the, the conversation for whatever reason. I don't know why. Cause I, I agree with you. I think it's aged pretty well. 
minus a few jokes fair enough. But, <laughs> but like what 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 comedy from back then like could say that they aged well like exactly like it's actually really um, impressive like the movie's all jokes it's really impressive yeah. that only like a couple haven't aged well everything it's else true. Is it is true it is true um but it is one yeah like i i find and i i guess you know as the years go by, it's just going to be one that gets forgotten a little bit more. Like even, even like I'm a bit older than you, but it's like, even I'd say in my generation, I don't know how many people have seen it. Like, unless you're really into old, right. quote yeah. unquote, old comedies. It might, like, I actually don't know too many people who have seen it. It might just be a comedy thing. I know comedies Maybe. don't have much of a, it feels like they don't have much of a shelf life. And especially now, like, I feel like people just don't know about comedies because like, they're not really a thing right now. Like, unless you want to watch, like the latest Kevin Hart movie on Netflix. <laughs> like that's like the only comedy oh we get now. So, so I like, had it's... a huge rant about Kevin Hart the other day. <laughs> I was just like, this guy is putting out absolute shit on Netflix, but he's making so much money from them. It's, it's like, it's impressive what he's doing. I and because it's on him. Netflix, it's so low stakes. Like he doesn't yeah. have to deal with box office bombing or anything like that. Like it, they put them out and they go away really quickly. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. But yeah, comedies these days, I think like the good comedies, they're like, they're funny, but then they always have like a, a message to them. Right. <laughs> they yeah. Always like, have like, like a social commentary message to them. Yeah. And you're just like, sometimes you just want to watch a movie like Airplane or like Dumb and Dumber or, um, what was it? Naked Gun, like those movies. Like sometimes yeah, you just good. want to watch those movies, which are just really stupid, stupid movies. But they're so funny and they're great. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think that we're kind of missing out on those because I think now those are that's yeah, that's all Kevin Hart territory. Yeah. More ironically, more people have seen like scary movie, like the scary <laughs> movies. Yeah. And I love those movies too, but they're like so much worse than Airplane. And but they're like the exact same style. Um The yeah. first scary movie is great. And that's a really funny movie. And especially when it came out, it was like, wow, this is funny, like good parody. Da, da, da. Yeah. And then it just became. Oh, I actually really like scary movie too. <laughs> I can't like I honestly can't remember like I can't differentiate them like they're oh, just fair. all blurred to me. That's like fair. which one is Shannon Elizabeth in? I remember she was really big for a time. Oh, oh Shannon okay. Elizabeth! I'm, I'm surprised. Oh, I guess I'm not surprised. Kevin Hart is in the third and fourth one. So is he? It surprised me that you would hate him. <laughs> I think that was like one of his that. first That's roles. Funny. Yeah, I know Regina Hall is in them, and I love Regina Hall. I'm very big fan. Yeah, she was in the first two, I think. I think she dies in the third one or something. I can't remember. That's really funny. It's just so weird. I don't know why they they have continuity on like who dies in scary movie, <laughs> but yeah. I don't know if it's yeah. continuity or it's more of those actors just being like, "I'm done with I it. I need a paycheck. <laughs> like, yeah, I yeah. need to make some money, guys. Like, just yeah. put me in. Put me in." Yeah. Um. Okay, so airplane. That's an interesting pick, actually, because I think that on, like, objectively speaking, you could argue that it's not underrated. It's very properly rated. However, as time goes by, it, it, yeah. it is losing its thing, though, like, because I, I don't know. It's just not a movie that kind of, which is like Princess Bride, for example. I feel like that has, like, younger people watch Princess Bride. Yeah, everyone like, knows For some Princess reason, Bride. Airplane. Yeah, I don't know why Airplane that gets missed. Yeah, I don't know why. That's actually a good question. I don't, I don't know why airplane gets missed. Too smart. It's too smart. It's smart. <laughs> Just sitting on your high horse. Yeah. Like, because people are. They don't deserve to watch me. it. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So this is the last question, and one that you said you didn't know Let's if you really it. had one. So we said we might workshop this. Um, sure. What is an I, unnecessary hot take that you have about a movie? Can I pick a TV show? Is that sure. possible? Uh, I hate the Mandalorian. I don't know okay. if that's a hot take, but I don't I actually, know if that's that hot. Okay, <laughs> Every, that's so weird. You don't like it either. I I don't mind it. Like I I, okay. I enjoyed it. Um, my biggest problem with Mandalorian was the crux of the like the friction in it is that baby yoda is always left in like precarious spots and like you have to go save him but then yeah. i'm like but why do you keep leaving him in random areas then like this is something that could be very easily fixed and it just kind of felt like every week was it felt like a video game mission like every week there was it didn't feel like yeah. they were looking at this really big story um 
And so it felt a bit repetitive after a while, but I did like, like I like Pedro Pascal and I liked how Mando and baby Yoda like interact with each other. Cause that's cute, but it's fine. I, I, but, uh, the reason I say, I don't know if it's that hot is just cause I suppose of the newer star Wars stuff that has come out, that's probably the one that one. most people seem very, very high on. That's fair. I, I think it's everyone I've talked to, has like they liked it. it or loved it, and it's so but weird they to me. An airplane though, Pierre. So right, yeah, exactly. They don't. <laughs> I mean, once they uh, see. Airplane, what about what like about Mandalorian? Movie. Don't you like though? I just I think the biggest thing is just like every I've seen so much about how like oh the Mandalorian's like breathing fresh air into Star Wars, oh, and like yeah, no. it's new, it's new and stuff, and it's like it's literally they reskin Boba Fett. They gave <laughs> him a mini Yoda. Like they literally gave him a mini Yoda. It's the yeah. They're just taking the the biggest icons in Star Wars and making a a, a spin off of them um, to sell toys, and it's it's so frustrating. But I just I heard that a lot. And it's nothing new. It's nothing like inventive or anything. It's just it's a very mediocre show, but people like it because of Star Wars. But the funny thing is, they did give Boba Fett his own show eventually. And that, that one really didn't play really, very well. Yeah, see, everyone agreed with that. that was, yeah, people, people did. I didn't even show. watch it. That one, that one did not pick up well. But um, are you a Star Wars guy in general? Like, do you like Star Wars? I used to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? What? Mate, where did you stop being a Star Wars guy? Uh, I think it was officially like after Obi Wan. I know it's pretty late, but like that was like they they kind of lost me after the Last Jedi. And then mm-hmm. Obi Wan, I think, was kind of like like I used to still read about Star Wars, and I tried watching the new TV shows and stuff. But Obi Wan, the show, the Kenobi show, whatever what it's called, it was just like the final nail in the coffin. It's like this is like this is like unhealthy for me. Like I can't I can't consume this content because it makes me depressed and it makes me <laughs> angry, um, and uh, it's not going anywhere. So I just. I decided to give up, which is unfortunate. I heard the new show is, I've been reading the new show is, is actually kind of good, but I refuse to watch it because. I've heard the new show is good. I will say I have fallen asleep twice trying to watch. Well, <laughs> okay. Thank you. You make me feel better for not but, watching it. But, every, but then everyone does, says that thing to me of, oh, no, 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 that's just the first episode. Like once you get into it, it's really good. And I'm just like, if you can't catch me in the first, like that's 40 minutes. <sighs> Like in, yeah, if you're watching right. a movie and if in a movie you don't get me in the first 40 minutes, like what are we doing here? So yeah. I'm just kind of like, I don't know guys. I, I, I will try to watch it again. Cause I like, um, I really like rogue one. Like I think of all the new star Wars stuff that came out, rogue one was one that I, I did really like, uh, but I don't know if I like it just cause of that last Darth Vader scene. I do wonder if that's right. The like it changed a lot. The last third of that movie changed a lot of my opinions. Um, but that but scene yeah, with Darth Vader was really cool. It was really good. Like, yeah, it was very cool. He was better in that movie than the TV show for some reason. Like in that one scene. Well, <laughs> you know, I I didn't watch Obi Wan. Um, that was Hayden Christensen came back, right? Yeah, for like yeah, he's, a couple scenes. Of, he's still not a good actor. <laughs> no, he seems like such a nice dude. Too. Right? Like, yeah, I, I feel bad. So bad about it. I really he seems like such him. a nice guy. But yeah, no, he's not. He's not great. He's not great, but whatever. Yeah. I, I just um, thought of another one really quickly. Okay. I don't actually, I don't know if this is a hot ticket. We'll see. I don't really like Fargo that much. I think Fargo, the TV show, is like much better. I was going to say the movie or the TV show? The movie. I think the TV show well, is better. I think that's a hot take, yeah. I would yeah, say okay. that's fairly universally believed. Maybe I need to rewatch it, but. What about um, it don't you like? <laughs> it's gonna sound so lame but i saw the tv show first so in my head i'm just yeah. like the tv show just did what the movie did but better and like i would kind of i would agree with see that what I, no. mean? I don't know like, if that's a hot take is it a hot take to say the tv show is better than the movie a lot of people might agree with that because i think it is better i think the tv show is better i think the idea of the movie kind of works better as a show than it did as a movie maybe that's what it is yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just remember being very disappointed by it because I, I watched all of Fargo and I was like, oh my God, like, I want more of this. And then I saw the movie and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was that was all right. But I definitely see where the inspiration came from, I guess. So it's kind of interesting to see that. Hmm. 
yeah. That's not bad. Okay, so that's two. I'm sorry. I can't think of one. One, one relatively hot take, I would say. <laughs> but I. But then. But then you follow that up with you, like you do like the TV show Fargo. Yeah. And perhaps if you had seen the movie first and then moved on. Maybe. I don't know. Then maybe that would To be good. fair, like a lot of the Coen brothers, I, I've, a lot of the movies on first watch I haven't really liked, but I was like, what is the Coen second brothers? time? Yeah, yeah. I'm with you on Coen brothers. I'm not. They're very hilarious yeah. with me. Yeah. That's another well, one. See, uh, that's another one, Dakota, and I disagree on Dakota really likes Coen brothers. Oh, cool. He also really likes Wes Anderson, and I'm like, Oh my god! Wait, do you like um, Moonrise Kingdom? Yeah. yeah okay. Why? Why are we all? Okay, so that's another one. Like, I feel like Moonrise Kingdom. Everyone loved that. I hate that. Movie. Does everyone love like, that? To my I thought core. people didn't. I'm just very. Like, I barely remember it. Like, it was such a forgettable movie to me. Like, I'm just. Oh. I don't know what I read. Know, about, sometimes I, when I read about online on like Reddit, they'll say it's like his best movie. Um, I think it's his worst one. I, I feel mean, like, like the Reddit film community though really they would, ride, <laughs> they would ride hard for for wes anderson and coen brothers yeah and tarantino. right tarantino would be another <laughs> tarantino big definitely for them. my yeah. god um, and I, I have nothing against these people but oh yeah they're all great directors they're fine they're fine they're fine, <laughs> they're fine. i can't yeah. <laughs> i think dakota and i always disagree about it. i'm always like yeah they're fine like it's... <laughs> tarantino has become like such a god and i'm like whatever really yeah. him He's he's okay. He's okay. <laughs> I like Inglorious Bastards. I think that's a great movie. That is a great movie. Um, Pulp Fiction also a great movie. Great movie. The rest I could do without personally. That's fair. I could do it without like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. That's the only one I think I didn't like. Yeah. Also, I was like a bit annoyed. Or Kill Bill. Like, I really Kill Bill. Kill Bill's. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. They're fine. Like, they're all fine. Who am I to say anything? I'm not Quentin Tarantino. He's oh, got, yeah. like, How dare you? Yeah, like, whatever. <laughs> Watch Airplane before you say anything like that. Jeez. <laughs> oh, God. Um, all right. So that is the end of the questionnaire. You got some really good answers. I really liked um, your answer for, for what made you fall in love with movies. I think that's a really nice. Oh, thank you. Um, of the ones that I've heard, like it's and it's better than my answer that I gave. Um, I think it's <laughs> it's I think it's it's nice. Like it's a, it's a really really nice answer, and it's a nice reason I think for people to like when you when you have a passion for something. Like I I always think it's really nice when there's a thoughtful reason behind it. So other than thank you, I watched a movie, I thought it was cool. <laughs> is that you? Which is what fine it is? too. Which is fine too. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. So Pierre, where can people? I guess find more of your work, which would be classic movies live. What do you guys guys got coming up? Uh, yeah, we well, we're on Spotify, right? We're on Spotify. I think the next one. Oh, we haven't done one in a while. We're doing one tonight, but just time at Tiff. Uh, him and his fifty movies. So that'll be. <laughs> we'll try to like. I'll try to narrow it down. I'll do my best. I think it um, was fifty. <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure if he said fifty. He watched a lot though. I I'm kind of scared um good luck with that (laughs) yeah and then i think after that we're gonna do like what we have we have don't worry darling lined up then avatar and then i think we're doing i hope we do the barbarian i know it came out a couple weeks ago but yeah oh that's still i feel like it'll probably come out on streamer soon ish oh geez yeah how long has it been out i don't even know not that long but i don't feel like they just don't keep movies out that long yeah that's fair it was a shame Um, but thank you so much, Pierre, for taking the time and answering the questions. Really enjoyed it. And we came under it's a shorter episode than Jeff's episode, so let's do that. Yeah, did I win? <laughs> yeah, you won. You <laughs> won for brevity. <laughs> Finally. Okay. That's like revenge for like him taking my always always nick the- good movies. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much, Pierre. And everyone can go check out Classic Movies Live. I'm sure Dakota will put all that fun stuff into the show show notes. Is that what they're called? Yeah, into the show notes. I clearly don't do any of that. So, <laughs> um, You can follow this show on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at ContraZoom Pod. And let us know who you would like to see as the next person on the Better Know Contributor Series. Could be Matthew Simpson. Could be Simon Best. Who knows who it'll be? Alicia Moogle? Like, it could be a lot of people. 
Um, but you can send an email to contrazoompod at gmail.com. Thank you to Eric and Kevin Smell for the theme music and to Stephanie Pryor for the logo design. If you like to listen to podcasts on YouTube, we do post all of the episodes there as well. Thank you so much for checking us out. Bye. Mm-hmm.